All right. Well, welcome to our technologically challenged edition here. Uh, sorry, we are a couple minutes late. For those of you who know me well, you know, I'm like, Robbie will attest to this, that I, I try, I mean, within reason, you know, if, if I'm like, when we have a call scheduled at three, I call it like 25940. You know, it's like, I, that's just my thing. Um, I love being, you know, a minute or two early, or at least on time. So I, I apologize. We sure as heck would have been on time if we could have been, but we were having some technological issues, including Mark, who just randomly disappeared. <laughs> so uh, good to have you guys here. I see a bunch of you typing in the comments. Of course, let us know where you're joining from. We always love to see that. Uh, hey, let's see, Mona Beth, Buddy, Mandy, Mark Ross, Candice, Heather, Patricia, uh, well as, okay, that just moved on me. Well as Anna, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Jackie, Sandra, Deborah, Phil, Susan, Darlene, and Jim. Hey guys. So to all of you, what if I told you that the number one key, the very first key to great email marketing was visualization. Like, what if I told you it was the same key as, um, well, you know, when I grew up playing golf, one of my keys was visualization. The great, Jack, uh, the great Jack, yes, the great golfer Jack Nicholas, not Jack Nicholson, he's an actor, but the great golfer Jack Nicholas said that you know you got to see it in your mind before you can, before you can actually hit the shot. And he would he would go through these elaborate visualizations, and sometimes like people hear that and they think it's like psycho babble, right? but it's actually my secret weapon when it comes to writing great email copy. Uh, this applies whether or not we're, uh, we're promoting an affiliate offer or whether or not I'm promoting my own products and services. It's visualization. And so I'm going to walk you through an exercise. I'm going to go through step by step like a bunch of you have. Um, and Hey, Tim, David, uh, Phil, what's up guys. Um, Type the word visualize and this, this process that we're going to go through today, we actually put together a PDF. So you don't have to remember what I do today. I mean, write down notes, take notes, you know, there'll be some nuance what I'm, what I'm sharing today, Kelly. Uh, there we got Mark on. Woo. Um, I was sharing at the top Mark that this was like the technologically challenged edition of, of, of our Facebook live. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> and so um, yeah. So make sure you type in the word visualize and we'll send you, it's just a PDF that'll walk you through step-by-step. Step. And I'm going to go into more detail what that looks like. But once you've seen me do it in detail, then you can use the guide to go through. Again, let us know where you're joining us from. We always love to see that as Kelly is down in Florida, where believe it or not, despite the COVID stuff down there, I kind of wish I was there. I'm, I've been craving the beach lately and Michigan's not really an option. They're they're they've gone they've regressed up there. So uh, we love Lake Michigan. It's like the ocean, but without sharks. And uh, so it's like the ocean in San Diego, not the ocean in Florida. The ocean in Florida is warm. The ocean in San Diego is like eight degrees. Uh, Lake Michigan's about the same thing. You know, if you wanna if you want hypothermia, it's a great place to go. But it's fun, and they have beaches. So um, here's something that uh, I saw a comment from Tanya Sutherland said, I, uh, we shared this before with some of our students. So this was a private, we, we, we didn't go into much detail if we're going to go today. So you guys are getting like the expanded version, which is really cool. Um, but she said, I love this visualization exercise. I'm definitely going to implement it in my next sales copy. Just thinking of my happy customers loving their product. You'll see why she says that later. And how it benefits them is giving me all kinds of exciting copy ideas <laughs> Those are the kind of results that you're going to get today with this exercise. Now, to understand the importance of visualization, I could take you back to my, my days playing golf. Um, I remember uh, I was actually watching the, uh, the PGA Championship this past weekend while putting our son's bed together. I only say that because Mark and Robbie get, make fun of me for the fact that I very rarely get to use power tools, but I assembled a bed, y'all. Boom! Boom! like a bed, like an actual thing. And so far after two days, he has not fallen through it. Um, <laughs> I say so far, cause I think I've, I think the way I built it, there's like an 80 pound weight limit. So I may have to reinforce it anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was up there drilling. I was watching the PGA championship and the guy who won it, Colin Murakawa, they asked him, he hit this shot on number 16 under like intense pressure. I think the hole is about 290 yards. 
you know, uh, short par four, and he hits it to like six feet, seven feet, makes the putt for Eagle to go on to win. And they asked him, like, did you think back to this shot that he had hit in a tournament that he won a few weeks ago and he, on another hole? And he's like, absolutely, I was picturing that shot. Like, that's the important of visualization. But for me, the example that comes to mind is not – um, it's not golf because I could I could cite you know five thousand examples. Like I still remember very specific shots I hit, and there would be times you know three months later I'd be standing over a shot and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that reminds me, that's just like hole number three at Watchesaw Plantation, and where I hit it to you know two feet under pressure and I won the tournament and like I would recall that shot and and it would help me. But I actually think back to when I did it poorly, which was my first ten k race. Uh, I was all the way back in 2015. I uh, learned a really valuable lesson about the importance of preparation and visualization. And all this ties into email copy. So I'm rounding the last turn. Uh, the last turn, like you go around this one turn down this the street called Berry Avenue. Then you go into the baseball stadium and then you round the outfield and there's all the people up there cheering. And then you come up the first baseline and literally the finish line is at home plate. It's kind of pretty cool. Well, I'm rounding that last turn going, oh, crap, we're, we're at the finish. I've only got like an eighth of a mile left. I thought I had like a half a mile, maybe even two thirds of a mile to go because I thought we were turning down this other road then running up here. I had read the 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 path for the, the half marathon, which at that point I was not running ran it the next year, but I was not running it that year. And I so I thought we went I thought we had like almost two thirds of a mile to go. And I'm like you know, that kind of sounds good, right? Like, oh, I have less to go than I thought. But the problem was I was pacing myself as though I had two thirds of a mile. And let's be honest, there's two reasons why I wasn't going faster. Number one, um, you know, I was trying to make sure I didn't like bonk out with like a quarter mile ago and hit the wall. Number two, when you're rounding into the stadium and going around the outfield and up first base, you don't want to be going do, 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 do. Like I want to enter that stadium and be like, look at me. I'm run- I know I'm in 191st place, but I'm running fast. And so I was pacing myself. Like I had, you know, that half mile. So I finished, I mean, the reality is I finished the race with like, um, you know, I finished like 20 seconds over my target. I easily could have beat my target because I could have been running faster for the previous half mile. And so I I knew like, you know, that visualization was just so important. Like I had no vision of what it was like to go down that street and where I needed to finish. And so it just, you know, basically I was running blind and we do that a lot in email copy. We go into the email copy and we're, we're, we're writing blind. We're not writing with a a visual of what we want not only to occur, but how we want to get there. And so really, when you think about good email copy, I think of good email copy as your number one thing is is to get them to open, which is what? The subject line. So we write a good subject line. The point of a good subject line is to get them to open. The point of getting them to open is to read the first sentence. The point of the first sentence is to get them to read the second sentence. And the point of the second sentence is to get them to read the third and so on and so forth. So that ultimately you get them to your call to action. That's the whole point. And so again, I'm thinking I had a half mile. I'm just plodding along instead. You know, I'm conserving my energy still instead of speeding up. And so that's the power of visualization or visualization, or in my case, you know, the lack thereof. Um, I'll share another example in a second, and then we'll get into this exercise with email copy. But just a reminder, as a bunch of you have, type the word visualize if you want a PDF copy of the visualization um, guide. So what we're going to be walking through later, you can actually have a PDF copy. So you don't have to worry about getting like all the steps today. You can really focus on, maybe you can even do it. So as I'm doing it later, I'm going to invite you to do it with me, not just watch me do it. Um, but actually do it with me. And so um, maybe Robbie or Mark, could you guys pull up some woo-woo music? <laughs> could you do that and play it? I'm being serious. Uh, for those of you who don't know what woo-woo music, music is, just Google like meditation music. And that really is what you want to play. Um, it's- Pretty sure I've, I've never looked up or figured out what woo-woo music is in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. Um Another good example, uh, 
just to, to share real quick, I, I watched this documentary on lawyers uh, a while back. It was actually really fascinating. Like what separates great lawyers from, from um, average lawyers. And one of the things that they, there's a term in, in the, you know what you would call it, the attorney business, I guess, the lawyer business uh, among lawyers, uh, they call like the great ones, they're called furniture movers. And so what would happen is like the day before the trial, the great attorneys would go in, they go into the courtroom, they, they would picture like where the jury is going to be seated, where this table would be. <laughs> I didn't You've say start to... playing it now. Oh, oh. You've well, turned you gotta Mark on to a whole new genre of music. I know, right? Yeah, I'm going to be listening <laughs> said, to the rest of this the, time. Get the woo-woo music ready, not start oh. it now. Oh, I'm going to mute myself and listen. Um, while you're... Oh. <laughs> no, it's just funny because it's like if you've ever watched like uh, a movie where the mu- like and you're like, oh, that music started just, uh, you know, they start like the chase music before the, the chase even starts. And it's like, wait, that's that's weird. Um, but like the great attorneys would go in and they would move chairs. They're called furniture movers again because they're trying to visualize like there's when they're rehearsing the case, they're even rehearsing like right down to the the the, the minutia of like where this chair is going to be and where this chair is going to be. And so you know, we did that in the army too. Like, did you really? Every, every time you move chairs? we would go, yeah, move chairs. <laughs> now, every time we would go train, we always, tra- the, there's a phrase, it's called train as you fight. So we mm-hmm. would put ourselves into that mindset. We would, uh, you know, put tape on the floor for however we were expecting uh, the situation to go. And we would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. And then by the time you get there, guess what? It's all muscle memory because you just, you know what to expect. Yeah. You've looked at different situations. You, you've kind of picked out what's going to happen and then you make it a reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think without belaboring the point, cause I want to get into this exercise, of course, but I want to tie this email marketing. It's like, it's uh, you know, I keep going back to golf cause it, you know, visualization is so powerful. I mean, you know, it's, it's important in every sport, really. It's important in almost every aspect, but I even think to like, when I'm on the practice tee warming up for a tournament, I would actually play all 18 holes at the end of my warm up, And I would work backwards from whatever the last hole was going to be, you know, so the 18th hole of the day, I would work backwards and go all the way to the first hole so that the last shot I was hitting in my warm up was actually my tee shot on the first hole. And in my mind, I could see all the details. You know, I could, I could see every single detail. Um, of like, I would look at the, the sheet that had, they're called the pin, the whole sheet where it would show where the, the holes are going to be on each of the greens that day. And I'm like picturing, okay, it's right there. I want to hit this shot. I want to do this. And so I've already hit the shot and it's kind of like the same, the example I often use is like a guy asking a girl out on a date. The importance of belief is so powerful. And that's why this visualization exercise works so well. The importance of belief it's different than confidence. Confidence is, is not, confidence is not really belief. You know, confidence is, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, it's, there's like a difference and I can't really think of how I would, how I would describe it, that, that confidence is different than belief in the sense that confidence is like the, um, I know it's going to happen and I trust my abilities. Whereas belief is more of like, sometimes I don't even have a reason necessarily to believe this is going to happen, but I, you know, by gosh, it's just going to happen, you know? And so it's like a guy asking a girl on a date and the guy goes up and he's like, Hey, um, do you like, uh, I don't know. Do you like food? Maybe, I don't know. Like if you're ever, if you're ever going to eat, you know, I don't know if you want to eat sometime, but you know, if you're going to eat, maybe you want to go eat with me or something, you know, what, what is he? He doesn't have belief, right? But if the guy believes that he's going to be successful, the odds are that he will be. Like he's prepared for success prior to asking. So there's a much better chance she'll say yes. Just to be clear, like expectation, preparation, visualization, this, this exercise does not guarantee 100% of people are going to buy from you. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a 100% click-through rate or 100% open rate. None of these things. I think it was uh, Zig Ziglar who said positive thinking doesn't guarantee success, but it sure makes it a lot, you know, heck of a lot more likely. That's a kind of a, I screwed that quote up, but you get the idea there. Close enough. And so I know this for sure. If you think you will fail, you will project failure and you will definitely fail. 
So again, what does all this mean for writing email copy? It's no different than asking someone out on a date. It's no different than, than convincing a jury that your client is not guilty or running a race. In order to succeed at selling affiliate offers, in order to succeed at anything for that matter, you must visualize making the sale first. That's what this exercise I'm going to share in a moment will help you do. It'll help you to become a furniture mover, you know, with your email copy. It'll help you get in the right mindset, right with confidence, and then ultimately be able to serve your audience, which is really the key because you don't want to, like, we think of sales. Sometimes the words salesy or sleazy, Jeff Goins, what's, what's our favorite word, Mark? Smarmy. Smarmy. <laughs> I still to this day have never heard another human being use that word. Thanks, Jeff. Unless they were talking about Jeff Goins. Um, but you know, smarmy, right? Hey, Tim. Um, and real quick before we do that. Yeah. Hey, Lorna, Alan, Ruth, uh, Rose. Good to see you guys. So this exercise is going to show you how to sell without being sleazy or salesy. Okay. It starts with the belief. This is key. This is kind of like step zero. You have to believe that you're serving your audience when you promote things to them because you are, you're, you're serving your audience. We talked about this in our mastermind, in our start mastermind, I don't know, two, three weeks ago. It might have been on start day and we were talking about how, um, you know, it's like if you had the cure for a disease, like if you had the cure, like if you knew for a fact you had the cure for COVID right now, would you like, I mean, where what what links would you go to to spread that message? Would you send... Um, a single form written letter, you know, a nice form letter via the USPS regular mail to the Department of Health in hope that they get it and then wait six months before anybody responded. No, you would go on social media. You would go on YouTube. You would go on Facebook. You would go on, you would go on like TikTok even, you know, <laughs> before it gets banned, you know, like you would go, you would go everywhere. You would be leaving comment. Like you would be spamming people's Facebook lives. We usually frown upon that. But if you have the cure for freaking COVID, tell me you're not going to come on here and be like, I have the cure for COVID. Somebody please listen to me. No, you're going to go out of your way because you're serving people. Like that, that's, that's the same mentality you have to have. Like, and so when you don't believe you're serving, it, it comes through when you don't believe people are going to buy. I mentioned the example of the guy asking the girl out that same, that same thing comes out in, in, it comes out when you're, it comes out here in video, it comes out in audio, but it comes out in your writing. It comes out in your written words. It comes out in your emails, your blog posts and all that stuff. And I mentioned in one of the emails that we sent, about this lesson is this applies to email copy, but it also applies to recording podcast episodes. It applies to writing blog posts. It applies to, uh, uh, applies to doing Facebook lives. So I did this visualization exercise earlier today as I was writing kind of the script, the, the bullet points for this and writing out the script for this and thinking through how I wanted today to go. I wrote the visualization and I saw what was already happening. By the way, I saw you guys typing the word visualize. Why? Why are you typing the word visualize? Because you want the PDF guide that'll walk you through this exercise. That's a, a hint, by the way, if you want the PDF guide that'll walk you through this exercise, type the word visualize and we'll send it to you. But like, I, I did this earlier. I do this before I do a podcast episode. It puts me in the right frame of mind. I've gotten to the point where this exercise takes me about three minutes. I once said that it should only take you about a minute or two. I found that that was actually moving through a little too fast. Um, it takes me about three minutes. The first couple times I did, it took me seven or eight minutes. It might take you 10 minutes to do it the first few times, and then you'll start getting faster, but the results are worth it. So use it when you write email copy, use it when you write a blog post, use it when you write a Facebook post, use it when you record podcasts, shoot videos, get ready for a Facebook live, do a live stream of any sort. If you're being interviewed for a podcast, you still use this visualization exercise. It puts you in that right frame of mind for success and makes selling if that's what you're ultimately doing. And you really are always selling. When I tell you to go get my free guide to visualization, I'm selling you on it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's a free guide, you know, it's a free PDF, but I'm selling you. When I try to get my kids to go to bed at 9 p.m., not 9.30 or 10 o'clock as it's been because it's summer and they like to stay up and go outside really late. Um, I'm selling them. Like we're always selling. 
So I know what Kelly, again, we taught this before with some of our, uh, some of our students and Kelly McCossey said, I'm so into this. If I'm promoting something uh, within my community, it's because I can see them using it. So this will help me be even more purposeful about it. So let's jump in. Are you guys ready? Step by step. Um, <laughs> Marsh says, usually Mark is on top. That's funny. Uh, so <laughs> I'm ready to push the button, Matt, whenever you want. Oh, <laughs> and by push the button, I mean, touch the screen because nobody pushes a button anymore. Yeah. So let us know if you guys are ready and we'll go through the step-by-step. -step. Are you guys ready for the woo-woo music? Actually, let's ask that. Just tell Mark, <laughs> push the button. Or push what was it? What is it? Touch the screen. Push Touch the, the screen. Yeah. Push the button. Push the button. Let's see it. Push the button, and we'll get some some woo woo music. If it was a little bit lower than what you had it earlier, by the way, um, and we'll go through this. So, I'm actually going to do something here. I'm going to turn the lights out because that's what I would do. I would not be doing this visualization um, with. Uh, with the lights bright in my eyes. Side note, I even meant to say this earlier. If you are from overseas and you spell visualize with an S. That ain't going to work. Change it to a Z. You sp Mark's got the shirt on. You spell it the American way today. We're in America. No. We're America. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn these lights out. And I'm ready. I, I've stretched and everything. I'm, I'm ready to push the button. All right. For those of you just joining, I'm not normally in the dark, but I'm doing a visualization exercise. All right, guys. So I'm now in a very, all right, we're ready. So step number one, I, sound, I feel like I'm at a Chinese restaurant, actually. It's weird. All right. So step number one, I get comfortable. You know, find a place where you can relax. It doesn't have to be like I'm in the studio and this is, um, I'm sitting on a stool, so I would, you know, this is not my normal thing, but it's, it's, it's more comfortable than standing, which is what I would normally do. You guys watch our Facebook lives. I stand. Uh, a lot of times I'll just sit on the floor and yes, I sit in a meditation pose. I sit in what is it called the Lotus position. Um, and I'll take, uh, you know, I just get comfortable, right? So that's important. I feel like at least no light or bright lights um, is, is a good idea. But, you know, if you're, in a, if you're in a place where you just have some natural sunlight coming in, that's okay. That's okay. And let us, that, let us know if the music's a little too loud for you. We can, we can turn it on. It might actually be a good idea, Mark. Um, so I'm comfortable, right? Step two, I'm going to close my eyes. And if you've ever learned how to breathe properly, I recently learned how to breathe properly, believe it or not. It's one of those things you learn when you're 41 years old. You learn how to breathe. Because um, I, I was a mouth breather. And I wondered why I always had a sore throat when I ran, you know, and it's because I breathed through my mouth. But I learned, you know, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Sounds a lot like we're getting ready to do yoga, right? Well, kind of the same thing. So I'll take a few very deep cleansing breaths. For me, that's five to seven seconds in. I'll hold it for three or four seconds and I'll release the breath for a count of about five to seven seconds. Um, as a side note, it's also a great way to fall asleep <laughs> if you do that for about five minutes, but I'm just going to take about three or four of those deep cleansing breaths. I'm going to try to feel my body relaxing. Um, a lot of times I will actually in this step, I've learned this is not in the guide, but I have learned for me that it benefits me if I actually have my mouth or my eyes open for the first couple of breaths, but I let them just kind of go hazy. I learned this uh, from a guy who taught me meditation. And so it's, it's called, um, I think it's just called an unfocused gaze. And so I'll find something in the distance and just kind of let my eyes, um, basically anything that's close to me now goes into double vision. And and I'll let that eventually just get very blurry. And then on my third breath, as I'm breathing in and holding it right before I exhale, I close my eyes. And so now I'll take another deep breath. So about four of those total. And then I'm going to imagine the person reading the email. 
So for today, we'll talk about email, but maybe I'm imagining them watching the video. I'm imagining them listening to the podcast. Again, this is before I do any of it. What do I want them to be doing? You know, I'm going to go into as much if email. I'm going to go into as much vivid detail as possible. I'm imagining them reading the email. Am I trying to be funny? Then I want to see them laughing. <laughs> is it what kind of funny is it? Is it a sarcastic funny? Is it a slapstick funny? Is it a, you know, not to be crass, but there's a difference between a joke about a bowel movement and a joke about, you know, something else where I make fun of the way a, a certain person says a certain word or I, you know, am I, am I just making reference to the fact that I'm from the South originally? And, you know, and I say, what, well, or as we'd say down South, blah, blah, blah. That's, those are different levels of funny. Is it a pun? Do I feel like there's going to be a pun in there? When I talk about the excuses to not start affiliate marketing, I call them the big butts. <laughs> Cue childish laughter, right? So I'm like, what am I, what, what emotions am I expecting? When I tell the story of Wayne who overcame when we had the government, the government shutdown, uh, a couple of years ago, it's a very emotional email. I'm expecting to be inspired by Wayne, but also a bit overwhelmed, perhaps even a bit, not, not sad, but emotionally moved. And I want to, I want to picture those details in my mind as they scroll through this email. What emotions am I evoking? Laughter, joy, anger. Anger is a perfectly good emotion to inspire in people. You know, a lot of, um, a lot of change comes from anger. And I would dare say Martin Luther King Jr. made an impact on the world. Gandhi made an impact on the world. They were both angry at the way things were. And so what am I, what am I inspiring in them? What emotions am I, am I, uh, am I invoking in them? So go through those details. How long is the email going to be? So is this an email where they're going to scroll three or four times to get to the bottom? Is it an email that's going to use powerful imagery or is it just more to the point? If you guys read my email, sometimes it's, hey, I recorded a podcast today. Here's what it's about. Go listen. And that's fine. Other times it's, let me tell you a story and it's a long email. I want you to picture each of those details in your mind. So again, if you want to get the guide, we're on step three here which is just imagine what they're, how they're reacting. Um, you can get the guide by typing the word visualize or visualize, and we'll send you the PDF guide where you can go step by step. Just remember to spell it the American way with a Z. So they've now read the email. I want to visualize them. In this particular case, we're going to talk about a sales page, but maybe they're going to listen to the podcast. Maybe they're going to watch the video from the email. Maybe from the video, they're going to click to the sales page. Maybe from watching the video, they're going to they're going to download the PDF. I'm picturing you guys typing the word visualize. And, and, and I'll go into this in a, in a moment, but like that's what I'm doing. I'm picture, picturizing, yes, picturing you guys going to that page, typing in your email, downloading the guide, picturing the person going to the sales page. Let's say that I'm promoting an affiliate offer and they're clicking to the sales page. Well, I know what the sales page looks like, so I'm picturing them loading the sales page, watching the sales video. I'm picturing them reading through the email copy, and I'm picturing them seeing that testimonial that stands out, that identifies with them. Oh my goodness, that testimonial from Kurt Grella, it's so powerful. I'm picturing them watching that video and going, wow, that's amazing. I'm picturing them, picturing them seeing the testimonial from Phil Card, we have on today. We're seeing Gwen's testimonial. I'm picturing them watching the video with Phil and Gwen and, and the others in our start mastermind and going, oh my goodness, I, and I have to join that mastermind, right? Like these are the things that I'm, I'm picturing them doing. If it's an affiliate offer, I'm picturing them reading reviews and, and getting a really good feel. And again, this is all happening so far in probably the, a minute and a half. Now I'm picturing them clicking on the enroll button or the download button or the buy button, the join button, whatever it may be. I see them seeing the price. 
agreeing that this price is worth the investment. I, I see them seeing the price and going and nodding their heads going, yes, that that's, that's the thing. Sometimes when I visualize and when I'm writing an email overcoming objections, I see them seeing the price and going, I don't know if I can do that. Two different emails. One of them is coming from the angle of, yes, I've been hoping you were going to ask me out. And the other is, I kind of think you're cute. But I don't know about going on a date with you. And so I want to see both of those. And the key here is remember that you believe in this product. And so they will too. And maybe they're, you know, again, you're writing an email later where they visited the sales page already. You're going to follow up with them. They haven't bought yet. And so your visualization is they go, oh, I'm not sure it's worth the investment, but I, 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 I want it, but I'm just not there yet. But now you've gotten them to the point where they are there. They see the price and they go, yes. Maybe they talk to their spouse. And there's their spouse said, yes, this is what we need as a family. I want you to get this course or this product. I see them taking their debit card out, their credit card out. I see them type in their information. I see them click submit. And they've officially made the decision to purchase. And I see them being satisfied. My friend Ridgely Goldsboro said something a while back. He said, people buy because the act of buying makes them feel good about themselves. It's a very emotional thing, but they go, I did it. I took the leap. Let's say it's a $2,000 course. I did it. I took the leap. I made the investment. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to change my life. Maybe it's a $15 book, but I see them going, yep, I spent 15 bucks. I can't wait for the book to get here. So that's step six. Step seven. I imagine them enjoying the product that they've purchased. Like, how are they using it? You, know, you want to think, how are they using it? If it's a course, picture them going through the course. Picture them taking the course. Picture them watching the videos and taking notes and um, getting results from the course. If it's a physical product, you know, if, if, if I'm selling this rowing machine over here, I want to see them sweating. After 18 minutes, pushing it for two more minutes, just sweat is dripping down. And I see them using the machine. I see them afterwards on the machine, <sighs> breathing hard, you know, taking a sip from their water. Like they're just drenched. And I see these things. I see them actually using the product. If it's, if I'm selling them this microphone, I see them recording their podcast. I see them launching their podcast. If it's our course, for example, uh, you know, one of our courses, I see them going through the course. So say we'll, we'll pick uh, find affiliates now. I picture them going through lesson one and making their list of potential affiliates. I see them going through lesson two and reaching out to them. I see them going through lesson three and following up. I see them in lesson four, setting them up as affiliates. I see them in lesson five, you know, actually doing the lessons going through and setting them up and, and sending these emails and doing the follow-up and managing all, like I see them following the system that we teach and I'm going, yep, I see them taking action. And all that's great, but if I don't do step eight, then, because you can go through my courses, you can go through other people's courses, you can buy that rolling machine, but if I don't visualize your future, which is step eight, Take a moment to visualize their future. How has this product changed their life? The, the rowing machine, what do I do? I picture them six months down the road, a year down the road, and I picture them at the beach where they're comfortable taking their shirt off. I picture them playing with their kids because of the diet that they're on. I picture them living a long life and getting to meet their grandchildren, walking their daughter down the aisle. I don't know if Alan's still on, but he knows the power of this because he planted this vision in my mind when he told me when I was, you know, 80 some odd pounds overweight. He said, if you keep this up, some other man's going to walk your daughter down the aisle. And I can picture that. But now all I see is me walking her down the aisle. What is it made easier? What are the results long term? And I want you to take a moment and just enjoy their success with them. They found some affiliates. They have affiliates. They're succeeding with it. Awesome. 
they bought this, this, uh, you know, this lighting system. And I see them like recording Facebook lives. They bought the, the example we used last week was the switch pod. And I see them recording YouTube videos because they're confident that they can, because they have a tool that will help them. What is it that they are, are needing to visualize? So I take that time at the very end to just picture their future. Like I said, sometimes it's that I, I visualize a person, the target audience for an offer is somebody who's part-time. They currently, maybe not now because of COVID, but they work in a, we always call them cubicle dwellers. They, they, they dwell in a cubicle 40 hours a week and they work, they hustle in their business in the mornings at night and at night. But when I visualize them a year down the road from purchasing one of our courses, I see them in their home office. I see them like I see, you know, Robbie. I see them with a bookshelf behind them. I see them in a studio. I see them with a setup in their house that they're working from home. I visualize them taking off a moment midday and going to the zoo with their kids like I'm able to do. I see them where their kids are spending time with them at work because they're able to, I see them taking off for work to go to the, I see, I see them not missing a kid's game. Never missed a kid's game. You know, I'm, that's one of the things I'm most proud of my entrepreneurial journey. So I've never once missed one of our kids games. I see them not missing games. I see them not missing ceremonies at school. Those are the things I see when I visualize those type of things because those are the results that I want our students to get. So that's ultimately the eight steps. When you go through those eight steps, now you're ready to sell. Now you're able to go up with confidence. You're able to write. And again, it shows up in your language. It shows up in the, the, the types of words that you use in your emails. And as Chris and Susan Beasley said, said, I loved this visual, love the idea of this visualization exercise. Never thought of using it as you suggested. We do believe that we, what we communicate with our audience will benefit them, but adding the deeper visualization of seeing them benefit from what they just purchased is very powerful. And that's what we want to do. We want to go through all eight steps. Like I said, that takes, um, you know, ex doing it and explaining it. I don't know. I didn't time it, but that probably took about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, when I first did it, it took about 10 minutes. And now I've got it down to about three minutes ish that I can go through that, see the result that I want to all the way through from the very beginning. They're opening the email. What, was, what, what kind of subject line is going to make them open it right down through that. So here's what I want you to do. Get the guide. So you just have it handy in case you, you know, forgot a step. And trust me, uh, I now, I don't need a, a guide. <laughs> I've done this enough. But I can tell you that when I came up with this, like I'm the one who came up with it and probably the first 15 to 20 times, I'd be like, wait, what was step five? I, <laughs> you know, and I'd get there and be like, wait, no, they're on, wait, what? Oh, that's right. I have to picture them, you know, taking out their debit or credit card. Okay. You know, and then, and then I would forget like the little things like, you know, picturing them being happy with their decision. And I would remember like steps one and then two, and then I'd like forget three through six and then like, you know, seven and eight are kind of easy. Like you want to picture those, but yeah, I would forget stuff, <laughs> you know, all the time. So grab the guide, commit to taking a couple minutes before you create content, before you visual, uh, you know, before you write anything, you record anything, visualize the outcome that you desire and then start creating content that converts. So I know Robbie put the, uh, the dealio up on the screen there. I love what you said there, Phil. Um, and I'm absolutely going to do this before I write my next podcast episode. It's super powerful. Um, Jim says, this is the breathing exercise I do to lower my blood pressure. Heck yeah. So I'll do this. Um, I will, met, I'll test this out. Let me put these lights back on. You know, it's a little dark in here. Um, I'll test this out sometimes when I'm running. 
So I'll be on a run and I'll stop for just a moment. Whew. Right. Um, my pupils are dilated, I think. <laughs> and so I'll be on a run and I'll stop, you know, maybe for like 30 seconds. And I'll do that. I'll do two of those breaths where I, I, uh, I breathe in for five, hold there for, you know, hold, breathe in for four, you know, five or six, hold it for four or five and release it in five or six. And instantly, because when you hold your breath, your, your heart stops beating. And at least the science that I understand, um, you know, temporarily. And, uh, and I'll watch like just in 30 seconds, my heart rate will go from like 156 to 164 beats per minute down to like 102. And I mean, it's like crazy how fast it'll drop. And so yesterday they had to, t- they had to do my, uh, my pulse at the doctor. Um, uh, cause I had to, unfortunately I'm going to spend a lot of time with doctors over the next few weeks. <laughs> Yay. Um, so I was out there and I was just curious. So they put the little pulse thing on and right before they put it on, I had done the, the, the breathing stuff, not because I knew they were going to take my pulse, but because, um, one of the medications I had taken earlier in that day kind of makes my heart race. And so I was just trying to, you know, I, it was hot in there and I was just trying to, you know, I got nothing better to do. I'm sitting there waiting for the doctor. I'm like, I might as well just do some meditation. And so literally they took my pulse and she was like, can we do that again? Cause my, my, my resting heart rate was 36, which is like really, really low. Yeah. But it's cause I had just done the breathing exercise. So I was like, and I told her, I was like, yeah, I actually just did a breathing exercise. That's probably why you might want to wait like two minutes. And she waited and sure enough, it was like 51, you know, but she was like, I, you might be dead. <laughs> so anyway, um, any questions guys, as we wrap up here, I mean, that's, um, that's it guys. That's the visualization exercise. It's a super powerful exercise. Uh, that we use. So hopefully you guys got a lot of, did we lose Mark, Robbie? We did. So, so the technology issues continued. So <laughs> we lost, I was like, I remember thinking, where did my woo woo music go? Um, we were so into it that the music and you became one. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise we will wrap up, but I hope you guys got a ton out of this. And like I said, I, I hope you guys use this. Um, it's uh, <laughs> Jim. I got your text, <laughs> uh, and yes, you totally distract. I'm going to call him out because it just came across my screen and said, "I don't want to distract you on the Facebook Live." Yeah, you totally distracted me. <laughs> so um, awesome! All right, so yeah, I challenge you to um, to do this. You know, to just to practice at it and see how much it helps you. I feel like when you go through those steps, typically what I'll, I'll tell you what it's done for me. And this doesn't always happen. This doesn't always happen, but I get, I get an idea. I get a word. I get a subject line. I get a, a, a feeling. It's not my phone. It's my computer, Jim. Um, I get this, like part of it is it's just that, it is that feeling, you know, but I would not be surprised if, um, if part of it is just the, it's like the psychological fact that, you know, 12 minutes before I was sitting down to, or I usually stand, but, you know, standing to write the emails, I was in a meeting with Robbie planning, you know, like stuff, you know, content and stuff like that for the future. Uh, 45 minutes before I was doing a budget, you know, um, and then, you know, 11 minutes before 10 minutes before I was on the phone with a doctor or something, you know, right. My mind is not there. And like, just the, the act of, I mean, I, I don't know. It, I think there's definitely a part of that, that just the, the ability to breathe and close my eyes and do something, you know, relaxing is probably at least a third of it. I would, I would dare say in the cleansingness of those breaths and, you know, breathing is, is probably very powerful. And then, um, but again, going through that exercise has made a huge difference for me. So I hope it does for you too. Um, love what you said, Lorna, 
Try it out, guys. And with that, we'll wrap up. Make sure you grab the guide if you haven't yet. If you're watching this in the future, watching the replay, just type visual, visualize. Why that word is so hard for me to say today. <laughs> um, type the word visualize, and we will send that to you. So with that, we'll wrap up. And uh, Robbie, what do we got next week? Actually, I meant to put that in our notes for today, but we're talking about something. Oh, next week, I think we're going to take everybody. This is something we asked if you guys wanted and you guys said overwhelmingly yes. Next week, we're talking about how we how we write emails, right? Yeah. So we're, yeah. So we're talking about next week how we write emails. So kind of like, hey, we've done the visualization. What does the next little bit look like? So we're actually going to walk you through the process of how we write emails, um, how we manage those as a team, you know, kind of our whole process. Because I think we asked you, I don't know, probably about four or five weeks ago, I, I said, like, who, like, do you guys want to learn that? And you all were like, yes, 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 yes. So we're going to do that next week. And, uh, but now with that, we'll wrap up and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.